Hi Floss Tube, Stephanie here from Miss Oh So Crafty. Welcome back or hello to uh, those of you who are new. First of all, I just want to say, well, happy 4th of July to all my fellow American friends. <clears throat> For those of you in Canada, I know Canada Day was Friday, July 1st, so I hope you guys had a good one as well. And to everybody else throughout the world, I just hope you had a great weekend and a good beginning of July. <laughs> So, like I said, today is July 4th. It is about 5 o'clock p.m. And today has just been the grossest day. Dark and cold and raining. But So the light's not going to be great, but I wanted to do this. And I do have quite a lot of things to share. I uh, have whips and an FO. I have some stash acquisitions. I have some... Uh, I'm going to do a tag, and I might do a little, I'll share an FFO as well, and maybe I'll share some stash. We'll see what we have time for. <laughs> so, how is everyone doing? For me, uh, I'm glad the year is half over. <laughs> Hoping the uh, second half of the year is better than the first, so I was watching, uh, I heart cross stitch and she said that she likes July 1st because it's a new beginning and I say hurry to that. Let's have a new beginning everybody and I hope that everybody has lots of uh, goodness stitching and otherwise in their lives. So let's get started. <clears throat> my first whip that I worked on after my last video was Love with a capital L by Papillon Creations. I will show you the pattern. And I'll insert a pic of my previous progress. So I am stitching this on 25 count antique smoky white Lugana one over one with Boreana silk floss and three colors. I'm gonna have to back up a little. So here we are. What I did this past time is this bit here. I finished this decorative piece, did a little bit of this uh, border, I don't know, border, but uh, band pattern, and then the L. So that was page 10 of 12. And there's <clears throat> supposed to be a bottom border here, but I didn't do the bottom border because I'm going to be adding an additional section with my wedding details. So all in all, I have, well, three more pages, including this one up here. So one, two, three, and then my personalization section, which will be, I don't know whether, I'm not sure how big it's gonna be. Um, I need to get some graph paper and sketch it all out. I've sort of like sketched it out in the margins of my chart already, but I need to put it all together on a, a big sheet of graph paper, so. I'll keep working on this and hope to finish it by November. I spent two days on this. So it's coming along. And then after that, I moved back to my maiden and unicorn uh, project. I will insert a pic and also my previous progress. I'm stitching this on 36 count antique white Edinburgh linen, two over two. So here's my progress. What I did is I finished this bottom border here and started working this one up a teeny bit. You can see like the darker blue. And then I did the rest of her skirt. So this is, this is the entirety of her skirt. What else remains here would be like the unicorn's body and his tail and stuff. So I cleaned up a lot of those threads I had parked to a little bit closer. There were so many colors in there. It doesn't really look like it, but there were a lot of uh, shades of each color in there, like maybe three shades of each tone. So <laughs> it was quite a lot. And it was fun to stitch though. I mean, the skirt doesn't involve hardly any fractionals. So that was cool. 
unlike the border, which is chock full of fractionals. <laughs> but it's not that bad if you really just get down into it. And I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. And I look forward to picking it up again uh, later this year to work on the rest of the unicorn and then the border halfway up. So up to the same point as it is over here. And then I think I should be in a good position to finish it next year. We'll see. I spent, oh, let me look at my notes. Um, hmm, I think a whole week on that. Or no, five days. Five days in all. Yeah, five days in all on this. So. And then after that, well, so this was my, this was my, one of my wine and whips for the uh, Stitch Mania Stitch Along. And then it was time for my fourth wine and whip, which was supposed to be my full size Hayden Merlin and author, but I wasn't feeling it, so I didn't pick it up. It remains a UFO. <laughs> Whatever, I rescued this from the UFO pile this year. Isn't that enough? <laughs> So, but I did do something else with that time. I, uh, I'll share that in a minute. And then I decided to make my Summer Bell Bowl by Stony Creek my last wine and whip. I will insert a pic of what it's supposed to look like finished in my previous progress. So I'm stitching this on 18 count white and cloth by uh, MCG Textiles. Got it at Hobby Lobby. It is 100% polyacrylic. So here is my progress. So I finished the S block. Did the, getting close, did the frogs and the flowers and the canoe. And then I moved down to the U block. The U block was a pain. There is so much white in there. Stitching white on white, especially on this fabric, is just not much fun. I kept on messing it up and had to frog, but eventually I got through it, and I do like it now that it's done. So you see that there's the lighthouse, and there's a sailboat, and some kites flying, and clouds in the sky, and of course the beach and the ocean. So, And then I worked, started working on the M. So... This one, I'd say it's about half done as of yet, maybe less. So this is going to be a slice of watermelon up here, and then there's strawberries in this basket. And then in this area, there's like a picnic table pattern. And then over here, there's like some butterflies, I think. So I worked seven days on this. And so it's been nine days total since I started, and the project is not yet half done. So total completion time for this one, I'd say, would probably be around, like, maybe 24 days or so. More than three weeks, probably less than four weeks, maybe like three and a half weeks, I don't know. So I'm going to keep working on this throughout the summer and see if I can crank it out by the uh, autumn equinox, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I don't it's not like a super high priority. I would like to have it done, but as soon as I finish this, I'm going to put pressure on myself to start the uh, another one of these seasonal bell pulls. And I don't know, these projects are just a lot more work than I thought. Each one of these blocks is like five inches square. So it's like, well, it's 82 stitches across and top, you know, across and wide, 82 square. And there's just so many color changes and like little details. It's, a lot more work than I thought it would be. <laughs> so. And of course there is back stitching to be done, but that it's not that big of a deal. I'm not gonna worry about that, I think, until the end. And there's like a button pack or something too that you're supposed to get. I'm kind of on the fence about that because the, the placement of the button, some of them would like cover the stitching. So I'm just like, oh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling about it at the time. So that was my last wine and whip. Took me up till the end of uh, July, seven days, like I said. I'm sorry, end of June, seven days, like I said. And then July started. I think I'm gonna, this will be my It's a Sunshine Day project or whatever it's called for the Stitch Mania July Stitch Along. 
I don't know how much I'm going to get into it though because I'm focusing more on my Christmas projects for the Christmas in July. Stitch along over with the cross stitch finish line. I love doing Christmas in July. July is just way too hot for my liking and stitching Christmas stuff reminds me of my favorite time of year. So, <laughs> The first project I decided to work on is The 12 Days of Christmas by Joan Elliott. And here is what it should look like when finished. So, pretty big project, very involved. It says uh, 14 by 18, but that's on 14 count. It'll be a little bit smaller because I'm using 16 count. And this was a, a kit from Design Works. So I am using all the fibers that came in the kit, but I switched out the fabric to use 32 count white with silver sparkle from Fabric Flare. Like I've said before, the silver sparkle is kind of like not there. <laughs> Here is let's get this un unraveled. Sorry for all the hanging threads. There we go. So this is what I did this time is I finished the swan block and I did this block with the, the maiden the the maiden milking. This block was a pain just so much going on in there so many different colors and it was just like it seemed like it took forever and then I started this block the uh, lady dancing and as you can see it's, it's coming along I I think I can probably finish this like probably tonight or whatever I've worked on this uh, four days so far including today and I'm gonna keep at it until Thursday so and I stitched I started working on the uh, outlining another block. This will be the Lord of Leaping, this one. And I stitched a little bit in the uh, drummer drumming block. And a little bit here in the um, Piper's Piping, yes. 11 Piper's Piping, yeah, that one. <laughs> a little bit of the sky there. So, and I worked on these borders, this one and this one. Hoping by Thursday, well, after I finish doing the, the regular cross stitching over here, I'm going to start the gold metallic, which needs to be done here and here and here and here. All that. And then I'm going to back stitch that whole area. Hopefully, I can accomplish that by Thursday. If I manage to and I have any time left over, I will start working on the Lords of Leaping and this border here. We'll see, but uh, it's coming along and I'm glad that I'm spending a whole week on it because I feel like this project needed sort of a, you know, a jump start, you know, <laughs> because as of, I've just been working on it like two days a month, so it needed an extra dose of effort. And hopefully I'll be able to, I should be able to finish it, I think, by like December because there's just three more blocks. I mean, you can see this is, there'll be a little bit more down here because there's a bottom border, but this is almost the bottom of the project. I'm not sure whether I want to finish this like frame it or if I want to make a wall hanging out of it. I don't know. But uh, I'll decide when I get there I guess. So that's it for my whips and now I will show you my FO. So after Instead of uh, Merlin Author, I decided to go back and work on my paid quick stitch master colors, art by Linda Ravenscroft. And I finished it. Let's get close. So this is stitched on 22 count Lugana. I'm trying to like, the light's not great in here, unfortunately. But, I don't know, maybe I'll insert a picture just so you can see the colors better. In any case, this is stitched on 22 count Lagana, full cross, 2 over 1. It is a tight squeeze. Um, the, color, the coverage is fantastic. Though, when it was done, it was a little bit, like, bumpy and stuff, just because I worked in columns and all the confetti and everything. But 
what I did is I, I steamed it. I steamed, ironed, and steamed it pretty good on the back side, and then on the front, I just gently steamed it. Like, I used the iron, but no pressure. And that worked wonderfully. It flattened it out nicely. And when it came to do my signature, I tried to do my signature down here, but it just, it didn't work because there were, uh, it was just invisible. There's too many colors under there, and I wanted to make my signature small because this piece is small. It's only like four and a half inches square. So what I did is I stitched some extra black on the bottom and did my initials on top of that. And this one, I think I want to frame it. I want to frame it in an elaborate manner, that's for sure. And there's going to be a black inner mat, I think. So the black that I stitched will blend in with that. And I'm considering sending this one to uh, Jill Rensel Studio so she can work her magic with the embellished mats. But I don't know. I'll probably wait a while and decide what I want, what I want to do with this. But I'm so happy that she's finished because I started this in... 2007 and I wasn't sure if I would ever finish it. I mean the confetti in this pattern is just insane and it's it's small it's like a hundred stitches square but when like every almost every single stitch in a 10 by 10 block is a different color it's pretty easy to get discouraged you know <laughs> but I figured out you know a way to make it work and I got through it so I'm happy and I've been looking at my other paid charts. I have probably like half a dozen or so, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe next year. I'm not going to like run out and just like start a Hade. I've got like a lot of other, another new one. I've got uh, many other projects to worry about, so we'll see. <laughs> but I do love her. I mean, I love the, uh, the rainbow of colors and I love her mysterious expression. I'm still considering adding a little bit of backstitch to this. Of course, there's no backstitch charted on the Hade chart, but I think sometimes backstitch enhances CGI charts. I'm going to show you an FFO now, which will illustrate what I mean by that. <laughs> so, excuse me. Okay, so this is Waiting for the Mist to Clear art by Ian Brooks, charted by Character Creations, Carrie Blackwell, I think. It's stitched on 32 count uh, linen. It's like a very subtle hand dye, like a blue-white type thing, and it's about, this was my first CGI chart. It is about 280 by 230, I think, stitches. It took me a year and a half. It was a lot of work and a lot of confetti. This is where I first learned how to use the um, highlighter method, you know. <laughs> but what I did when I was done is I, I added some backstitching to it. You can see, like, you might be able to see the backstitching in his hind legs there. Or, like, on his wing and his face a little bit. And I'm really happy I did that. I just feel like it enhances the design a lot. This guy is it's pretty huge. This frame is like two feet tall and a foot and a half wide. I did frame it myself. Not all that well, unfortunately. I need to probably take it to get apart and redo it, but not today. <laughs> the uh, stretching on it uh, leaves some, something to be desired. The fabric's not very uh, flat. But I do love this one. I, I think of him like a, a guardian keeping watch. So, I finished this back in 2007, I think. Yeah, so I finished this one and then I was all like gung-ho to like start the Hades. So I bought the Mask of Colors and Merlin and Author and the, uh, the Mask of Colors, the... <laughs> sure, this one has confetti, but nothing like the confetti in the Mask of Colors. That's like a completely different level. I have looked at my other hate charts, and they're not certainly not all as confetti heavy as masks, so that's good. And I can probably say that I won't be stitching another one that is like that. It's just not my cup of tea, you know. So, but here's my dragon, and very proud of him. I love him. I love like the feathery quality of the uh, clouds, and 
I love his the translucence of his wing, upper wing there, and his powerful hind quarters and his inscrutable expression. I just, I love it. The blues and the greens are my favorite colors, so. That's it. Okay, so now we're gonna do a tag, and the tag is from D Stitcher. It's the mid-year, year in review tag. Thank you, D, for these questions. She did it uh, last year, but you know, it's middle of the year for this year, so I figured it would apply. <laughs> the first question is, is the year going the way you thought it would? I think so. My plan for the year was to start 16 new projects and finish 12. So far I've started 11 and I've finished seven. So, oops, lost tube, itchy nose, sorry. <laughs> That's not bad for mid-year. Of the projects I finished, they were, some of them were large. I finished like Celtic Christmas and I finished Midsummer Night Fairy and I finished Air Goddess and some of them were medium, like, the uh, Mask of Colors, some were small, like Blitzen, and I guess the Minion was medium. So, and then what else did I finish? I don't know. It's not important. <laughs> Let's just say I finished seven. I know that much. And that's cool. So... The second question is, have you learned anything about yourself this year? Well, I have learned that I, although I mean, I certainly enjoy making new starts. I don't know if I'm really a serial starter. I just feel like I like to finish things. so, And I like to finish them in a timely fashion. And when it comes down to it, like, the more you start, the less you work on your existing whips, you know, and the longer it takes to get things done, so... I just like to, I like to have finishes. I guess you can say I'm more product versus process. And that goes with, that was always the same thing with my knitting too. Like I would knit something and I wanted to finish it. I wanted to wear it. Like, sure, I have whips, knitting whips and UFOs, but I don't, uh, I, I try to finish things and I don't like having things hanging around forever. But that said, like, I did plan to rescue two of my cross-stitching UFOs this year. The Maiden and the Unicorn, which I did rescue and I have worked on a few times and I'm really happy with how that's coming along. Glad that I rescued her. But the other one I was supposed to rescue is my full-size Hade, Merlin, and Author. And that one is not uh, gotten any love and I'm just, I'm not feeling it. So. I guess what I've learned is that I can't really like make myself do stuff that I don't want to and I'm not that disciplined about cross stitching and I think that's a good thing because you know this is our hobby and it, it's supposed to be fun you know like real life has enough obligations and drudgeries so why make your hobby into something like that you know like <laughs> stitch what you want to stitch and just enjoy it so I will try to rescue Merlin maybe next year. Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's just that piece has so much brown, you know? I'm really not all that fond of stitching brown. But I do really like the chart, and I know that if I kept at it, I would get to more interesting areas eventually. So we'll see. <laughs> the third question is, have you learned any new techniques this year? Um, not really, unless you count like stitching one over one. I doing that on my Love with a Capital L piece, one over one on 25 count for the first time successfully. So, and I love how it's turning out. And I'm looking forward to trying it for a full coverage piece like a Haid. So, but as for like specialty stitches and whatnot, uh, not really. I haven't done a whole lot of that this year. I did more last year when I did this. Um, fairy tale sampler project for my son, so I'll have to like, show you guys that one day. It's pretty cool. And the number four question is, what would you like to accomplish for the rest of the year? Well, I want to make five more new starts. One of those would be the Earth Goddess, which I'm hoping to get started pretty soon here, like this month. 
And then, sorry for the noise. <laughs> my husband's got my son. He's, he didn't take a nap today, and he's pretty, like, cranky. <laughs> so. Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. What would you like to accomplish for the rest of the year? Okay, so I want to start five more projects, and they're going to be Earth Goddess, and then for the rest of them, I think, are going to be, like, small to medium-sized projects. And... I'm thinking about uh, making two of them the uh, Noir Corvette, the Witching Pixies, Gigi and Anna. I'll stitch them together on one piece of fabric. So it will count as two starts, but it will be like a decent size FO in the end, which I think is fair. <laughs> and I do want to finish more projects. Like I said, I wanted to finish 12. I've only finished five so far. So. The ones I want to finish include Siren and Shipwreck, which is like, just needs some more beads. So that's like a couple days, you know, certainly less than a week to finish her. And I want to finish my two small Christmas projects, which include Dancer and the Mill Hill Angelina ornament. And what else do I want to finish? I want to finish the 12 Days of Christmas by Joan Elliott and also Love with a Capital L. And what else? And then I will share with you my haul. So I got a couple more magazines. Are you sick of magazines yet? If you are, I'm sorry. I just, I've been stacking up on these patterns, mainly by Joan Elliott, and then I see something in the magazine, you know, like an advertisement or a preview of something else I have to have. So this is the world of cross-stitching, number 183. And there you'd see Joan Elliott's Santa on the cover there. Santa's sleigh ride. So here's a better picture. Magical Journey. Isn't that gorgeous? Love that. And this is really nice. Leslie Tear, Special Angel. This would be so lovely for like a baby's room. A pillow, birth announcement type thing. And I thought this was nice. The tree tuffet, kind of a cool like ornament type thing. That's by Lynn Bruce. And this is neat. Dickens Noel. So it's all these like little cards and there's so many of them all fitting in with the Dickens theme. Cool. That's it for that magazine. And then I got this one. Cross Stitch Collection number 190. Christmas Teddy Joan Elliott on the cover. That's why I bought it. So here's the Christmas Teddy. Isn't he cute? Oh my gosh, I love that. I think it's so adorable with the the block spelling out joy and the little bird that he's holding and the Christmas tree and the, the topiary. Oh man, I love that. I might need to stitch that like next year or something. I thought this was really nice. Phoenix and chrysanthemum. I need to stitch a phoenix, I think. It's like one of the mythical, and I haven't gotten around to stitching that as like, I've stitched a lot of mythical creatures, but not a, a phoenix. This one is nice. Oh yeah, so the, this one is by Anchor of the Phoenix. And then there's The Mother's Pride by Maria Diaz. Um, mother, lioness, and cub. And here is Family Christmas by Sandy Littlejohns and Deb Lester. I think that's pretty cool. Nice vintage flair there. And then lastly, Holly Green Berries Red, Gail Boosie, kind of a cool Christmas sampler type thing. I like that a lot. I'm not really into stitching alphabets, but I, I might do it for that one. Yeah, so as kind of an aside, I'm sure you've heard of this death by cross stitch thing, you know, by long dog samplers and the, uh, it's very tempting. I mean, it's a gorgeous chart, but the the alphabets in it are wrong. They're missing some letters. So I don't think I could stitch that. Every time I looked at it, I'd be like, but it's missing letters. 
<laughs> I'm probably not going to be buying that one. And then I got this Stony Creek pattern, Fright Night Friends. It says Halloween, it's like a bellful type thing. It has cute little things on it. It says like, Fright This Way, Welcome to Our Patch. Best Witches, Come On and Sit a Spell, Trick or Tweet, it's all about the candy. So I thought, I think this is pretty cute. It's 80 stitches by 406, so it's definitely a bit smaller than the seasonal, the seasonal one I've been doing. And let's see, two more magazines. So this one is Cross Stitch Collection 177. This one I got for the Father Christmas, but this one is nice. Winter Warmer by Carolyn Palmer, Poinsettias. And Colors of Winter by Leslie Tier. Nice bird design. I thought this was cool. All in the family, like a family tree that you can put in with... Um, Photographs and it's really neat the way the photographs are put in you basically like you satin stitch the photo corners And then you just stick the photographs under your satin stitching. So how cool is that? And here is Father Christmas by Joan Elliott. I think that is so pretty The only thing about him is that he's like He's wearing a long robe um, I guess that's not bad. It's kind of like a skirt, but whatever. <laughs> I think it's a really pretty pattern, and I'll probably stitch it one of these days. And then Heavenly Host. So these are like some angel Christmas cards. And these are Joan Elliott as well. So I thought those were cute. And then something I got off eBay. This is Fresh from the Orchard by... Frankie Buckley, Leisure Arts. So there's four patterns in here. This is the peach and the, the grape. And then this is the pear and the apple. Each one is meant to be stitched on 28 count fabric over two, and then each one works up to be like four by six or something like that. And then this is supposed to come with the mats as shown. So you like the each mat is unique and it kind of extends the greenery of each of the patterns. And I bought this off eBay. It said it was conditioned like new, but when I got it, it was not. <laughs> the mats have been removed and the whole thing was out of order. So I had to like take the staples out and like rearrange it. So the charts are all here, but if I ever want to stitch this, I'm going to need to like buy it again to get the mats because that's how you get the effect basically. So with the mat, it fits into a 8 by 10 and I would like to do this for my kitchen, I think. So. When I looked at this, when I looked at the charts, I was like, man, you know, because I'm going to Summer Bell Bowl for my kitchen, and these would have been much less work than that. <laughs> so. Maybe I'll mix it up, like do one bell pull, then do like one fruit, or I don't know. We'll see. And then last but not Okay, two more magazines. Here we go. So this is Cross Stitch Gold number 32. October 2012. Isn't this cool? Wind in the Sails by Anchor. Really nice tall ship design. Love that. And then the reason I bought the magazine, Joan Elliott Rapunzel. I just love this. I love the I love her long blonde braid that's so pretty and the window with you can see the treetop. It really gives the feeling that, you know, she's at the top of the tower and her isolation and I just think it's really cool. So I hope this is this one of these days. And I guess that was it for that one. There wasn't a whole lot that I liked in there. And then cross stitch gold. This is issue 31. This one had more. So this one, Life is Beautiful by Susan Bates. Really nice cottage design with some cute little ducks. 
The Kitchen Garden by Anchor. That's nice. Here is Joan Elliott's Sleeping Beauty. She has another Sleeping Beauty chart, which I own that I actually like better, that she published in a, a book. Magical, or I'm sorry, I can't recall the name of the book. It's either Magical Crossage or Fantasy Crossage or whatever. I, I did share it on one of my previous videos. This is actually the reason I got the magazine, these fantasy cards by Joan Elliott. So there's the dragon and the phoenix. And then there's the unicorn and a pegasus. And my idea for these is to stitch them all together on one piece of fabric stacked vertically like Beltle style. I think that would be cool, like a fantasy creature Beltle. And like I said earlier, I do really want to stitch a phoenix. And this is small. I mean, each one is like, I mean, it's card size. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like 60 stitches square. So it's not that big of a deal. But um, maybe I'll put a big phoenix design chart on my list for like next year or something. We'll see. So that is it for my haul. And then... I guess that's pretty much it for the stitching. So thanks for watching. And I realized that I recently reached a thousand subscribers. That's just, it blew my mind. I, I can't believe that many people are interested in listening to me ramble on about my cross stitching. Thank you everybody who is subscribed. Thank you to everyone who comments and hits the like button and all that. You guys just, you're so lovely. And I consider you all my friends and Thank you so much for your support. I, it's definitely one of the things that keeps me stitching. I know I have like you know stuff to uh, a community to share with, and it's great. So I love you all, and I hope that uh, you get lots of stitching done. And I'll see you in a few weeks. Other than that, I do have some knitting I want to share, and that is the sweater that I'm wearing. So it's called uh, Cherry. It's by Annabelle. And it's stitched, it's knit in um, Alain Sonata, which is a DK weight uh, mercerized cotton. It's the back view. It has like this all over like bird sort of pattern. And the pattern is by Annabelle. It was independently published. You can find it on Ravelry. I used about um, 800 yards to knit it, which was like over 100 yards more than pattern requirements. So for my size, which I, I knit the 35 inch size. So if you're interested in knitting it, just be mindful of that. Maybe buy some extra yarn. And I did like a a braided tie for the, the belt business. I think it called for like eye cord or something, but I wanted something like flatter. And I do really like this um, project. You know, it's nice little summer sweater, nice and lightweight. And it wears like wonderfully. You can throw it in the washing machine, dryer. It looks just pretty much as good as the day that I knit it. And it is like eight years old, so <laughs> that's cool. And it took me, um, I'm not sure how long it took to knit. Let me see if I can, uh, three weeks in May, 2008. And I used US sixes for a gauge of five and a half stitches per inch. And I used uh, threes for the, the knitting, the ribbing, as you can see on the, the sleeve, for example, and the, the neckline. And the button band is ribbed. And about the yarn, I wrote, I'm, I'm looking at my blog entry here. So I wrote that, um, you know, it's 100% cotton and it has a really nice uh, tight twist to it. It um, has a nice color too. It did have a few knots, but the, um, the yarn, at least at the time, it was incredibly cheap. So I got this 
I knit this whole sweater for like $16 or something, which may not seem like a bargain if you're buying stuff off the rack, but uh, it does tend to be kind of expensive to buy, you know, knitting yarn. And if you're buying sweater fondies or whatever, $16 is a, is a bargain. So, yeah, I could deal with a few knots. <laughs> so I, I like this for, you know, the 4th of July. It's nice, you know, red. So I guess that's pretty much it for my uh, knitting. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in a few weeks. Bye.